Hi, this is Dr. S. P. Harsa, Assistant Professor, Mechanical and Industrial Department, IIT Roorkee. I am going to deliver my lecture 33 on the course of the strength of material, and this course is developed under the National Program on Technological Enhanced Learning. Prior to start this lecture, I would like to briefly discuss about the previous lectures, and you know, like we discussed about the deflection theories of the cantilever beam or a simply supported beam. In that, you see here the first. Uh, theory was discussed as the direct integration methods that if you see he, uh, the beam is loaded by various kind of loads uh, as well as you see the uh, combined loads, point loads and you see the UDL then how we can get uh, the slope as well as we can get this deflection. So the first method which is pretty simple method is the direct integration method in which you see we need to derive the equation as uh, EI into D2Y by DX square which is equals to uh, M. So through that you see you know like uh, first of all we would like to know about the shear force diagram and bending moment and based on that the bending moment we can easily get the dy by dx that is the slope as well as the y that is the deflection. And then second method which we discussed about the area moment method. In the area moment method uh, simply you see we do not have to calculate the individual deflection and individual you know like the integration points at uh, the boundary conditions. In that we discussed about that if you know the bending moment because you see in that all these cases we, we know we need to know the bending moment. So once you have the bending moment diagram only we need to get the area under the bending moment and once you know the area under the bending moment then you have the slope and then once you again you see multiply this area uh, with the distance then you have the deflection as you, as you can see on your screen that these two formula in the area moment method. So first of all you see uh, the slope which is nothing but the theta between the two different points in on the beam as well as you see uh, on any of the two conditions uh, if you want to know the slope then it's pretty easy to calculate because it, it has to be multiplied by uh, 1 by ei and ei is the flexile rigidity of the beam depends on what kind of uh, beam material is there because e is the young's modulus of elasticity and i is the moment of inertia for that so 1 by ei into the area of bond bending moment diagram between those two corresponding points where the bending moment uh, diagram is to be drawn or we can see that you see theta is nothing but equals to integration of uh, a to b because you see these are the two corresponding points where we want to calculate the bending moment. So you see for that integration a to b m dx by e i and m dx integration of a to b m dx is nothing but the area under the bending moment diagram because you see this bending moment diagram is coming within these two reference points. So this is your slope and once you see you have the slope then uh, it is pretty easy to calculate the deflection because it is nothing but equals to again you need to integrate that uh, uh, you know like uh, the theta. So once you integrate the theta within these two points you have the deflection that is the delta which is equals to 1 by ei again the same flexural rigidity of the beam into the first moment of area with respect to point B because you see you know like this is the A is the reference point and B is the second point through which we need to calculate the first moment of area and then you see you need to multiply with the distance x bar. So if you see you know like the formula delta A which is equals to 1 by EI A into x bar, x bar is nothing but the distance of centroid form from point A. And you see A is the area of the bending moment diagram and EI is the flexural rigidity. So this you see you know like uh, these are the two key formulas to calculate the deflection as well as the uh, slope for a beam irrespective of whether the beam is a cantilever beam, beam is a simply supported beam or a cantilever beam is you know like uh, uh, subjected by a point load at the extreme end, the free end I should say or we can say the various combined loads are there only we need to get the bending moment at the individual point or we need to get the bending moment diagram and once you have the diagram at individual points you can easily calculate the slope as I told you as well as the deflection. And you see we discussed the various numerical problems also in the previous lectures about the cantilever beam, simply supported beam, even you see it has a point load UDL, the uniformly distributed load or a triangular load. So if you see the regular or irregular kind of loading is there then also it is pretty easy for us to calculate the deflection as well as the slope for that and that is that is why you see it is preferable to go for you know like if we have a different kind of loading area moment method. Then you see we would like to now discuss one more method as I told you that is the Macaulay method and this is you see always uh, preferable to use this method if the loading condition changes uh, you know like uh, changes along uh, with the span of the beam. That means you see if the uh, load condition is uh, frequently changing then it is very hard to you know like uh, check the interaction of these bending moment and it is really hard to draw these things. So that is what you see for this kind of loading always it is better to draw 
some sort of function for a kind of deflection or we can say the slope and then you see whatever the boundary conditions are changing it can be easily uh, in incorporated in those kind of functions. So that is what you see Macaulay says that if you see the loading condition is uh, frequently changing changing along the span or along the path of the beam then always you see you need to uh, you know like uh, get the corresponding whatever the changes are there in the bending equation. So, you see we need to incorporate those functions in the bending moment equations and this requires that a separate moment equation be written between the each change of load point and that is you see the flexibility is there in this Macaulay method so that you can easily incorporate that those changes by written a simple separate uh, bending moment function for individual load uh, segments for each change of the load point and uh, the, that two integration be made for each such bending equation. So, that is what you see you know like we need to simply write the separate functions for the separate loading and then simply incorporate whatever the boundary conditions are there correspondingly. Evaluation of the constraints or the boundary conditions introduced by each integration can be easy can become very involved because you see you know like you can simply involve all those kinds of changes in those equations and fortunately you see these complications can be avoided by written single moment equation in such a way that it becomes continuous for entire length of the beam in, in spite of you see discontinuity of the loading. So, you see here what we are doing here simply you know like after taking the different different segments of those functions you need to write a simple equation by incorporating all those different functions of the loading within that segments and then incorporate the boundary conditions because you see if you are simply taking the boundary conditions of outer part some of the functions are can be easily ignored. So, this is the key feature of uh, this Macaulay method and now you see we would like to discuss briefly about that uh, how the Macaulay method is functioning. In Macaulay method you know like uh, we need to take the help of a unit function approximation as I told you or we can say the Laplace transformation which can be easily taken in order to illustrate this method. However, both are essential means you see we need to take the uh, this unit function as uh, this uh, uh, approximation as well as what the direct loading is there because whenever the direct loading is there or we can say the initial loading is there there is no need to describe this kind of loading by the function as you can see in this diagram you can easily you know like uh, these are uh, the A and B C D these are the four different points at the different kind of loadings are there at point A and point D there are two reaction forces R A and R D. So, you see if you want to write you know like uh, this if you want to incorporate that what the loading is there at point A then there is no need to take the unit function approximation or I should say the Laplace transformation only straight way you can write the direct loading condition at this point and then you see if uh, let us say the if, if you want to take the in impact of uh, uh, the load at point B then again you see we do not have to write the function but now if you are changing the you know like the loading condition from segment B to C then we need to describe that how this you know like uh, the loading function will be ap uh, you know like approximated and how this unit function will come in uh, in this particular way. So, you see here you know like by taking uh, the point load at uh, B 500 uh, Newton and uh, from C to D we have UDL which has the intensity of uh, 450 Newton per meter then these distances are given to us. Now, what we are doing here we are simply taking the section xx at this position you see UDL because we just want to incorporate whatever the changes are there right from A to X. So, you see here the x distance is there at this x x section. So, just keep this figure in our mind now we just uh, need to write the general moment equation using the deflection m which is nothing but the combination of all those you know like the moment at the different different load conditions. So, you see here the uh, moment equation m is nothing but equal to summation of m for all those loading conditions which means that we consider the effect of all the loads lying on the left of the exploratory section this means you see now we are starting from point A and then you see we are going towards the point D and whatever the load conditions are there we need to write the moment equation for all those segments and we can see that we have the different segments at this uh, or we can say different portions are there where the loading conditions are changing like you see for point A to B at point B the point load is there from, from point B to C at point B we have point load uh, uh, means the unit load is there and point C we have the UDL and from point C to D we have an effect of UDL of 450 Newton per meter. So, with the consideration of all those things now we can simply write the moment equation as 
m of a b is nothing but equals to 480 newton meter then we have you see you know like because only the reaction forces are coming at point d so it has only the impact within this particular segment a b so we can straightway write this moment as 480 newton meter then you see here now we are incorporating the point load at uh, point load at point b which is 500 newton meter 500 newton so you see here with incorporation of that now since you see we are considering the x action at the udl portion so now we need to expand our moment equation m of bc is nothing but equals to 480 okay into x minus now you see we need to incorporate that what you see because you see 480 <clears throat> into the reference point is there so we need to multiply with the x distance minus because the load into distance is the moment minus 500 into now this is a, a kind of you know like uh, because x minus 2 because now 480 we considered already for a b so we need to neglect that part and we need to write this 500 just for this b c section so that is 500 into x minus 2 newton meter and now if you are going for m c d then you see it has you know like the indirect impacts are there from r c d or point load at point b and then you see we need to when we need to write you see the equation then it has you know like all those components like you see 400 into x 480 into x because of the uh, reaction force at point d we have uh, 400 uh, 500 which is you acting you know like uh, just downward uh, direction so minus sign is there so 500 into x minus 2 and minus u udl is also going towards the downward direction as you see you know like uh, this uh, reaction forces are going upward so it has a positive reference point so now we have the com combination of all these three moments altogether if we calculate the moment at cd which is nothing but equals to 480x minus 500x minus 2 minus 450 by 2x minus 3 whole square newton meter so which incorporates all the you know like uh, the combined effects of the load so it may be observed that the equation for mcd will also be valid for both mab and mbc because you see it is just providing all the terms x minus 2 and x minus 3 square which are you know like neglected for the values of x which is less than 2 meter or 3 meter respectively because you see we cannot go for the negative terms in other words we can say that the terms x minus 2 and x minus 3 square are non-existent for the values of x for which the terms in uh, parenthesis are negative so it's pretty clear that if we are writing the different functions of m then you see we need to calculate all those you know like the parameter with the uh, separate constraints but if you write the combined equations then you will find that uh, some of the values are just going you know like in the non-existent form because of the negative terms so this is quite invalid in certain things and now you see again if you would like to see those things then we found that uh, it's again the same diagram is there uh, with reference to you know like uh, this uh, uh, the same loading condition that uh, at the point A we have the same these uh, uh, RA and RD uh, these uh, two reaction forces are there which has 480 and 920 Newton and then 500 Newton of the point load is there at 2 meter from point A and you see for CD it is uh, 450 Newton per meter is there of the UDL so with the consideration of the same thing now what we are doing here straight away we need to take the reference point of y as you can see in this diagram exactly at the reference point uh, this uh, point a so now you see instead of taking x at uh, these you know like those you see sometimes uh, as we can see that uh, if we wrote the mcd which has you see you know like uh, uh, inclusion of all those uh, uh, components at point a b c d but certain values when you are going for x less than 2 or x less than 3 then certain uh, you know like the components are simply neglected because of their non-existent form of the negative values but now if you are you know like chasing the, if you want to include those things and if you are chasing those values then we need to consider those you know like uh, the reference point at a like you see here this is point uh, a where the reference axis is y so that now if you want to calculate all those things now it can be easily incorporated here so as any clear uh, indication of these restrictions one may use you know like uh, a nomenclature in which uh, <clears throat> the usual uh, forms of parenthesis is replaced by the pointed brackets and these are namely you see these pointed brackets are there with this change in the nomenclature now we need we have you see you know like a single moment equation which Macaulay methods you know like uh, simply uh, gave is m in the simple parenthesis for 80x because of the initial uh, this uh, reaction force moment uh, 500 into x minus 2 because of the uh, uh, this point load moment at uh, point b 
n minus 450 by 2x minus 3 whole square. So this is the combination of these in now in the parenthesis, which is valid for the entire beam if we postulate that uh, the terms between the pointed brackets do not exit for the negative values. Otherwise, the term is to be treated like an uh, ordinary expression because you see if it is a common uh, expression is there then we cannot uh, you know like uh, go for the negative and the positive values for these kind of expressions. So, as in another example, consider now the beam as uh, you know, like uh, uh, shown in this particular figure. You can see here now in this figure, we have simply shifted the loading condition in spite of the extreme end to middle one. So, if we can see this figure initially, now at point A and point uh, E, the two you know, like the reaction forces are there as R A and R1 and R2. So, R1 is nothing but equals to 500 Newton and R2 is nothing but equals to 1300 Newton. And now, this UDL is in between uh, point B and point C and point B is just 1 meter apart from point A. And you see it, this UDL having the length of 3 meter and it has the intensity is 400 Newton per meter. So, now you see here what we have we have the two things one is the point load and one uh, point load which is exactly at point E of the capacity of 600 Newton and we have the UDL which has the intensity of 400 Newton per meter uh, which, is spanned, uh, which is spreading in the span of 3 meter. Now, you know, like uh, what we need to do here we need to ignore those negative values and for that uh, we simply put the idealistic condition of the UDL on both of the uh, this free part. So, what we have done here, we simply put the UDL of the same capacity on the top of part and now you see to balance this condition, we simply put again the similar condition there in the uh, lower part as you can see in the another figure. This is 400 Newton per meter and now you see this is dotted part is the UDL of this kind and to balance this UDL now we have the same intensity of uh, this UDL and the bottom of the part and other uh, factors are remained same. So, by viewing this thing now, this is the another uh, uh, you know like uh, the example to just view that how we can incorporate those expression in that. So, here the distribution load extend only over the segment BC as you can see the uh, right hand part was there and we can create the continuity. However, you see by assuming that the distribution uh, of this particular loads extend beyond the C and adding an equal and upward distributed load to be cancelled with the you know like uh, just by adding the lower portion as you know like you have seen in the previous diagram. The general moment equation written for the last segment DE in which you see the upper and the lower portion are to be added which has you see the new nomenclature in that you see now you can see this M is nothing but equals to 500 X that is due to the uh, this reaction support and then we have 400 by 2 x minus 1 square is there because of now the UDL is coming and then if you go beyond you see this is the point where the B point is there at which this 400 by 2 x minus 1 whole square is the moment part and now if you go another point means at the C point 3 meter apart from that now we need to include, include that the impact of the UDL. So, we have the intensity of UDL which is 400, so 400 by 2 into x minus 4 whole square because the total distance from point A is now the 4, so that is what you see we need to include those function you know like with the distance of x minus 4 whole square. Now, if you move to point C to D, we have you see uh, one more you know like uh, the <coughs> reaction force is there right from the upward direction, so obviously we have the positive sign. So, 1300 uh, sorry uh, yeah 1300 into x minus 6 because the total uh, the length of beam is 6 meter. So, we need to include that part. So, it is x minus 6 Newton meter, but you see it may be noted that in this equation the effect of 600 uh, Newton load won't appear since it is just at the last end of the beam that is point E. So, if we assume that the exploratory and the, the junction, you know like the section at exactly at this particular point then we need to include you know like uh, that point otherwise you see it can be easily ignored because uh, at the application of 600 Newton we have uh, we have been there the distance of x equals to 0 at this point or else we will have to take the x cross section of this particular you know like uh, the beam beyond the point of E which is means you see beyond uh, the uh, length of 6 meter and then you see we can simply include the 600 Newton of the load impact. So, you see here this 600 
600 uh, Newton load in this uh, matter is simply invalid because of our uh, beam is ending at this point and you see our reference point is also at this particular section. So now you know like uh, with that particular reference point we are starting from point A and then you see we are moving from point A to B, B to C, C to D and then you see at point E where the junction is there or we can say the reference point is there of whatever the load conditions are there it is simply ignored and that's why you see the 600 Newton is simply ignored at this particular point. So now you see we have the total moment equations in which you see all those functions are to be evaluated or included in, in, the, uh, in the condition that we have whatever you see the 400 Newton the intensity of this UDL is there at point B which is the starting point or at point C which is the ending point you see it has been you see simply carried out with x minus 1 square at point B and point C x minus 4 square and then you see it has been you know simply incorporated at the point load at point A as well as you see the reaction forces at point A and last point. So you see here the simple processor to solve these kind of problems we have the two main points under this category the first point is there after writing down the moment equation moment equation because you see for individual sections only we need to consider that what are the you know like the loading conditions are there because you see if you are saying that the point loads are there and with the combination of that if we have the udl so what are the interactive effects are there on that particular beam accordingly you see we need to write the moment equations so after writing down the moment equations for the beam with the loading condition which is simply valid for all the values of x because you see we need to consider the x cross action where you see means uh, where it is lying that is the uh, you know like it containing all those pointed brackets or we can say that what are the, these particular brackets are there or what are the point loads are there with that and what are what are the impacts are there of these brackets as well as the point loads in that equations then integrate the moment equations like an ordinary equation so you see here this is the first thing that first we need to write the moment equation and then you see in these equations it has to be like incorporated all those brackets as well as the uh, individual points and then we need to integrate those uh, integrate uh, those uh, uh, simple you know like the moment equations just like an ordinary equations while applying the boundary conditions now this is the uh, important thing here keep in mind that uh, the necessary changes to be made regarding the pointed brackets so you see whatever the necessary changes are coming it has to become within this uh, you know like the pointed brackets so these two with, with these two points you see it is pretty simple processor to evaluate the deflection as well as the slope so now you see you have some of the numerical problems to simply visualize those things the first example is we have a simple you know like uh, the UDL and in the UDL you see you know like uh, the concentrated load is there 300 Newton which is to be applied at simply supported beam as you can see that and we need to you know like determine the equations of the elastic curve between the each change of load point and you can see the maximum deflection in the beam. So you see here we need to calculate so if you see the figure you will find that we have these two A, these three points are there A, B, C at A and C we have the two reaction forces which are coming on the top of that so we have you see R1 which is the reaction force at point A is equals to 100 Newton and the reaction force at point C which is equals to 200 Newton we can simply evaluate those things just uh, with those force balance and moment balance condition then you see we have the point load as it is given 300 Newton at point B so you see we have the distance of 2 meter from point A and 1 meter from point C so the total length of beam is the 3 meter so what we need to do here in this first we need to take the xx axon so you see here this is the xx cross axon from you see the point a it has a distance a and now if you look at this particular uh, the deflection curve which is the idealistic curve is there we can see that it is simply because of the point load of this we have this dotted portion of the deflection curve so now you see here first we would like to write as I told you that in the processor first of all the beam equation which is important here so first of all write, uh, write the general moment equation for the last portion BC of the loaded beam. So now what we have we have EI into D2Y by DX square is equals to moment which is pretty common equation the basic equation for moment is equals to 100 into X you see for that reaction force minus 300 which is the point load is acting at 2 meter apart from point A so we have 300 into X minus 2 Newton meter so this is the first equation for the portion BC because of the you know like the loaded beam is there we have EI into D2Y by DX square is equals to 100X minus 300 into X minus 2 Newton meter. So now you see we need to integrate twice to, uh, to get 
the deflection. So first you see we need to you know like uh, integrate first. So we have the slope equation which is equals to ei into dy by dx is equals to simply integrate. So uh, you know like 100 x is nothing but equals to 50 x square minus you see we have 300 into x minus 2. So we have 150 x minus 2 whole square and this parenthesis is you see of a special shape because of it is, it is simply showing the unit function approximation for you know like the Macaulay's method. So 150 x minus 2 whole square plus you see the integrating uh, you know like the constant is there c1 newton meter square and then again if we integrate then we have the deflection part e i into y, e i as I told you is a flexile rigidity is there just depends on what kind of material which you are taken and what kind of the shape of the beam is there so i is there. So e i into y is nothing but equals to 50 by 3 x cube which is pretty simple you see x square so x cube by 3 so 50 by 3 x cube minus you see you know like uh, x minus 2 whole cube by 3 so uh, 150 by 3 is evaluated so it, is, it has minus 50 into x minus 2 whole cube plus c1 x plus c2 and these are you see the two constants, two integrating constants are there because of the integration of uh, these main moment equations. So we have now the deflection equation, we have the slope equations and we have you see all those boundary conditions along with us. So now uh, to evaluate the two you know like the constant c1 x and uh, c1 and c2 of the integration, now we need to apply the boundary conditions uh, which is valid for the you know like uh, those uh, equations, uh, uh, those uh, figure which we have seen in that you know like uh, those uh, point loads are, uh, point load is there at exactly you know like 2 meter apart from point A and we have the reaction forces at point A and C. Now like so at point A where x equals to 0 because this is the starting point we have the deflection 0 obviously there is no deflection at the point A because it the simply supported beam is there so hinge joints are there so y equals to 0 and now if you substitute x equals to 0 corresponds to y equals to 0 in the deflection equation ei into y so now what we have we found that c2 equals to 0 so one of the constant is gone out keep in the mind that x minus 2 whole cube is to be neglected for the negative values. So you see if you are keeping x equals to 0 obviously it has minus 2 whole cube so it has the minus value so if this uh, parenthesis is just giving you the negative values we are simply ignoring that part so obviously we need to neglect that part. On the other hand you see we have the you know like uh, uh, just uh, the point load is there. Uh, the uh, reaction forces are there at point C exactly at uh, uh, the x equals to 3 meter. So obviously since again this is a hinge joint, the point joint is there so there is no deflection part is there because of the simply supported beam. So again the deflection is 0. So now we have the two main condition at x equals to 0, y equals to 0, at x equals to 3 meter, y equals to 0. So obviously again we need to put those things and now we have the different conditions of C1 also. So after having you see you know like uh, y equals to 0, 50 by 3 now we need to keep the x equals to 3. So 3 is square sorry 3 cube minus 50 into 3 minus 2 so x minus 2 whole cube so 3 minus 2 whole cube plus 3 1 you see uh, uh, this x into 3 so uh, 3 into c1 plus c2 has already gone 0 so we have c1 which is nothing but equals to minus 133 newton meter square. So after keeping the value c1 we have the total e ei into y is nothing but equals to 50 by 3 x cube minus 50 into x minus 2 whole cube plus uh, uh, this uh, one, uh, uh, minus 133 this is so this is now the moment equation which is valid for the applied condition of the beam. Having the you know like uh, with those uh, constant of integration c1 and c2 now we can simply write uh, the differential equations or we can say the moment equation for the different segment. So if you are writing the differential uh, this uh, equal moment equation for segment AB. So OB is just valid for the x is in between 0 to 2 meter. So for that you see we have the reaction force A at point A you see on just going upward direction and we have you see the load condition which is 300 Newton which is going downward direction. So for that you see we can simply write the moment equation EI into dy by dx which is nothing but equals to 50 into x square minus 133 Newton per meter square. So because of that you see only we are going up to 2 meters. So you see here the beyond 2 is just gonna neglect. So now you see the slope equation is this and if you integrate those things then we have the deflection equation EI into Y is nothing but equals to 50 by 3 x cube minus 133 x Newton meter uh, cube. So you see here you have the deflection, you have the slope for the AB segment. Similarly we can find the BC for the BC segment that is the same uh, deflection as well as the slope and it is valid just for 
x equals to 2 meter to x equals to 3 meter. So, you see here now x which is uh, greater than equals to 2 meter and less than equals to 3 meter, we have the equation is ei into dy by dx is nothing but equals to 50 x square minus 150 x minus 2 whole square minus 133 x. This is the whole equation as you see we pre previously derived the equation for BC segment and again if you can calculate you see uh, you know like by integrating that, uh, that particular equation, we have the deflection equation ei into y is nothing but equals to 50 by 3 x cube minus uh, 50 into x minus 2 whole cube minus 133 x Newton meter cube. So, you see here for the different segments you have slope equation, you have the deflection equations and from that by keeping the boundary conditions we simply got to know that where is the maximum slope and where is the maximum deflection is there. So, you see here the <coughs> just containing the solution we simply assume that the maximum deflection will now starting that as assumption because now you have the two different segments. So, simply by cut, uh, putting the boundary conditions and with the assumption that okay now for in the first segment you see you have the maximum deflection. So, just keep those boundary conditions. So, <coughs> with that assumption the maximum deflection will occur in the segment A B its location may be found by differentiating you see the equation 5 as I shown you in the previous case in the first as a segment a b e i into d, d y by d x. So, for that with respect to x and the setting the derivative to be equal to 0 because you see we are calculating the maximum deflection. So, for that you see we need to differentiate those things or we can say what amount the same you see you know like uh, the same thing will coming in the deflection part setting the slope equation means you see the uh, e i into d y by d x 4 is equal to 0 solving for those things we have you see 50 into x square minus 33 equals to 0 or we can say that when the x is equals to 1.3 meter. So, means you see you know like what we are taking we have a reference point A and you see x is just going towards the right hand direction. So, where you see the x equals to 1 point and total length is you see the 2 meter. So, within that at 1.63 meter we have the maximum deflection is there. So, we, uh, it may be you know like uh, keep in mind that if the solution of the equation does not yield you see the value of less than 2 meter then we have to try for the another equation of set that means for the segment BC. But fortunately you see we got that uh, the solution is uh, you know like the positive sign is there 1.6 which is less than 2 uh, you know like the 2 meter that means the maximum deflection is coming in the segment of AB exactly you know like from the point A uh, 1.63 meter we have the maximum you know like deflection x is there and for that you see we can simply get the value also by just keeping x equals to 1.63. Since the value of x is value for the segment AB as I told you or uh, whatever the assumption which we have made. Uh, uh, you know like for the maximum deflection occurs in this region is exactly correct and hence you see you know like we can simply determine the maximum deflection just by keeping as I told you x equals to 1.63 in the main equation where e i into y is equals to the same equation was there and by keeping those things we have e i into y maximum is minus 145 Newton per meter uh, Newton meter cube minus sign is there because deflection is coming just on the lower portion. So, obviously, it has the minus sign. So, you see here this is the real procedure to evaluate you see you know like uh, the deflection at the different different segments and the uh, slope at the different segments and also you see by keeping the boundary conditions we can simply get uh, uh, those values also and to find out the maximum deflection again we need to assume that in which section by simply our visualization we can simply assume that okay in this section it may happen to be there as a maximum deflection. So, with that assumption we can again incorporate that part and by keeping that assumption we have the value of the maximum deflection by just keeping the value of x that where is the maximum deflection is there what is the point of location. So, this is you see the first example for that and as I told you the negative value you know like uh, which we obtained here it just shows that the because the deflection is going in the downward direction as the x is quite usual you see only the magnitude is just you know like uh, in the lower direction uh, with regard of the sign is as usual you know like the desired part. This is denoted by d and the use of uh, you know like the y may be res uh, reserved to indicate the direction of uh, the uh, this deflection towards the downward direction. And now you see if we take uh, you know like as I told you the E and I are nothing but the property of material. So, if you are taking the B material which has the Young's modulus of elasticity as 300 giga Pascal and the cross section of the B this uh, you know like based on that we have the moment of inertia I is nothing but equals to 1.9 into 10 to the power 6 millimeter 4 or we can say that 1.9 into 10 to the power 6 meter 4 whatever you know like the arrangement is there we can simply keep uh, these values in the E I 
i into you know like uh, uh, minus uh, whatever the uh, figure was there by keeping those values now we have the maximum deflection at the 1.63 meter from a is equals to minus 2.54 millimeter so this is the uh, correct value of the deflection and we can get you see that what is the location is there and what is the value of uh, this maximum deflection is there so this is you see the simple procedure to calculate the maximum deflection as well as the deflection and the slope value at different segments of uh, the beam where the loading conditions are directly changing example 2 now we have going to take now you see in this particular example again the similar kind of you know like the simply supported beam is there but the support is there within the beam uh, structure means you see we have the free you know like uh, uh, the span is there in which there is no load condition is there within that part there is no support is there from the bottom side so it is required to determine the value of ei into y that means you see the deflection part at the position midway between the support and at the overhanging end that means you see you know like uh, we have a portion in which there is no bottom support is there the overhanging part is there of the beam as shown in this particular figure so in this figure you see here what we have we have a and d so in this figure you see we have the two main <coughs> uh, reaction supports are there at point a and point d and uh, you know like uh, simply by a uh, force balance we can simply calculate the uh, this uh, reaction forces at r1 as it is you see the 500 newton and r2 which is 1300 newton and uh, what we have in this figure is just the udl which has the intensity just say the same thing you see which we have taken uh, that 400 newton per meter and uh, the span of this is 3 meter for the total you know like the udl spreading and you see the uh, udl is starting from same the 1 meter apart from the point a and it has a 2 meter from point d but the key feature is that whatever the point load is there which was in the previous case exactly matching with the and this reaction force now it is hanging it is just going beyond the point d and it is our hang portion is there which is just you see the two meter apart from this reaction force uh, this d and it has the 600 newton at point d so that means you see whatever the slope or you see the deflection will come it will come you see you know like in this way as you can see on your screen the diagram just this is the slopey equation for the a to d portion and then you see we have the deflection portion at this because of uh, this uh, uh, point load is there at the free end so we need to evaluate those things so first exactly you know like the same process is there we need to write the moment equation for you know like uh, the entire span of the beam which is just valued to say right from point a to d to e and then uh, what we need to do here we need to simply apply the you know like uh, the different boundary conditions uh, with those things incorporating you know like all those uh, what the kind of uh, the elastic curve is coming and what you see you know like uh, the kind of uh, the brackets or the parentheses is coming in the way so starting from the first thing a simple ei into d2y by dx square is nothing but equals to the bending moment which is equals to you know like uh, from point a starting you know keep this thing that you see at point a point a is nothing but uh, the reaction forces is there just going upward direction so we have 500 into x minus 400 by 2 into x minus 1 whole square because udl is starting from point 1 uh, apart from you know like uh, this point a so we have you see starting point of udl which has the intensity of 400 newton per meter so 400 by 2 x minus 1 whole square plus now you see this udl has the total span of 3 meter so the total distance from point a is 4 meter so we have and the same intensity of the udl is there 400 newton uh, 400 newton per meter so 400 by 2 x minus 4 whole square plus now at point d the reaction force is just going up above the uh, you know like the top of portion so we have 1300 into x minus 6 newton meter and you see now like uh, just by integrating that we have first the deflection part uh, first the slope part ei into dy by dx which is nothing but equals to you know like just by integrating that part we have 250x square minus 200 by 3x minus 1 whole cube plus 200 by 3x minus 4 whole cube plus 650x minus 6 whole square plus c1 that is the first integration uh, constant and then again you see by integrating that we have the deflection part so ei into y which is the deflection uh, point is there is nothing but equals to 250 by 3x cube minus 50 by 3x minus 1 uh, to the power whole 4 plus 50 by 3x minus 4 to the power whole 4 uh, plus uh, 650 by 3 x minus 6 whole cube plus c1 x plus c2 so now you see and by keeping the boundary conditions of the loading conditions at different different you know like the segments we need to put those values and we need to get the integrating uh, the integration constant c1 and c2 
So to determine those, you know, like uh, the C2 value, again, you see, you know, like uh, we know that at starting point at point A, it is a hinge joint, so there is no deflection point is there. So at x equals to 0, we have this uh, y equals to 0, or we can say that E into I, Y is equals to 0. So obviously, we have the C2 equals to 0 for the same thing as we have, you know, like uh, uh, justified the previous case. Note that the negative terms in the uh, pointed brackets is to be ignored or to be neglected. So again, you see, this is the basic uh, uh, phenomena is there in the Macaulay method that whatever the negative values are coming in the parentheses, you need to ignore. And then you see, again, whatever the positive values are there, you need to consider and then evaluate the total impact of this moment. Now the next you see, let us uh, use the condition of E into Y equals to 0 at the right portion that means at X equals to 6 meter because here you see the reaction force is coming from the bottom part, we have a hinge joint so there is no deflection point is there so E I into Y at X equals to 6 is 0. So by keeping that value what we have, we have 0 is equals to uh, this 250 by 3, 6 cube minus 50 by 4, now 6 minus uh, 1 was there or x minus 1 was there, so 6 minus 1 that is 5 to the power 4 plus 50 by 3 2 to the power 4 plus 6 c1 because you see c1x was there. So now we have the value of c1 is minus 1308 Newton meter square. So you see by keeping the value of c in this main equation, what we have, we have the total, you know like uh, the phenomena is there that how, what the kind of you know like the loading conditions are coming and what the moment is there by incorporating C1 this minus 1308 and C20 we have the total equation for that. Finally, you see our main intention to obtain the mid span deflection. So for that, let us you know like uh, substitute the value of x equals to 3 meter in the deflection equation for you know like the segment BC because in the segment BC this x equals to 3 meter existing because you see uh, this UDL starting from point uh, this x equals to 1 meter to x equals to 4 meter. So the total you see x equals to 3 will come in the segment BC. So you see here, uh, just to update by uh, ignoring the negative values of the bracket in terms of x minus 6, obviously you see, you know, like or x minus 6, whatever the things are coming in terms of minus 4 or minus cube, we have the negative values, so these bracketed are to be neglected. So now what we have, we have the EI into Y for calculating the maximum deflection at x equals to 3, because if we keep x equals to 3 in x minus 4, we have the negative value. If we give x equals to uh, 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 3 in x minus 6, we have the negative values. So these two parentheses has to be ignored. So what we have, we have EI into Y which is equals to 250 by 3 into 3 to the power cube minus 50 by 3 2 to the power 4 minus 1 3, this is C1 value 1308 into 3. So we have the total deflection value EI into Y is nothing but equals to minus 1941 Newton per Newton meter cube. So this is the deflection at x equals to 3 meter. So for you see our hinging portion because you see still what we have done, we have simply calculated in between x equals to you know like at x equal, uh, at a point to d point. So now you see but we have again one loading condition which has an impact on the deflection portion and you see for that we just want to check that because of that whether the deflection is more than this point or what. So for that you see what we need to do, we need to put the x equals to 8 meter where the uh, this new uh, 600 Newton po uh, point load is acting. So for that now we have this equation, deflection equation EI into Y is nothing but equals to 250 by 3, 8 cube minus 50 by 3, 7 to the power 4 plus 50 by 3, 4 to the power 4 and you see we have, you see, you know like just by keeping x equals to 8, all those parentheses is positive. So obviously you see we have to consider all those bracket values for the segment of the loads. So 650 by 3, 2 to the power cube minus 1308 into 8 because x equals to 8. So what we have, we have EI into Y is nothing but equals to minus 1814 Newton meter cube. So meaning is pretty simple that if you check it out both the things, we have the maximum deflection exactly in between the point A and D and we have the another deflection at point uh, the E where you see the 600 Newton is there but the maximum deflection is coming in between the segment A, uh, segment BC. So this was the example you see only if we have the overhanging condition then how to calculate the deflection for different different segments. So obviously we need to consider the moment uh, you know like the equation for the overhanging condition is separately and then we need to calculate the deflection as well as the slope for that particular segment. Come to the last example, we have again the same simply supported beam 
which carries a triangular distributed load. So you see here now, the load itself is, you know, like the irregular, that means you see it is in the triangular shape. So at the two extreme corners, we have the minimum load, but exactly at the center portion, we have the maximum, which has the intensity of W0 Newton per meter. Just we need to calculate, you see, the, uh, the maximum deflection equation and the value of maximum deflection for that. So you see here what we have, we have in the equation uh, in this particular figure at point A to C, this deflection curve is there on the bottom of that you can see here and for that you see we have the reaction at point A and point D is the same that is W0 L by 4, W0 L by 4. So if we cut the portion, just take this particular portion out and if you see, if you analyze those things, what we have? We have simply the loading condition and we know that the centroid is exactly acting at the one third of you know like uh, this uh, from left hand portion or two third of the right hand portion. So from that simply taking the total distance as you see L is there so L by 2 L by 2. So for this L by 2 portion we have this you know like uh, we, we have you see the kind of you know like the loading condition W0 X square by L for that and it is simply carried out from this x by 3 distance at this way. So we have this load at this particular way, this is W0 L by 4, this is you know like the reaction force is there on the top of that and on the bottom of side you see we need to consider the re regularity of that and you see since it is a varying load, so obviously we need to take you know like the what the kind of variation is there incorporating that variation Zx by 2 is equals W0 uh, x square by L which is to be acted at uh, this uh, one third distance of uh, this. So you see here with those configuration, we can simply calculate you see what will be the maximum or what will be the diffraction is there at different different segments. So due to the symmetricity, again you see this is a pretty important thing here that we have the symmetricity in this uh, loading means it is just you see at the extreme uh, maximum at the this particular joint section and it is just you see going downward you see and going to be minimum at the extreme two pin joint. So the reaction at is uh, one half of the, the total loads obviously you see it is uh, 1 by uh, 2 W0 into L as you see R1 and R2 which we have already seen that W0 L by 4 is there and due to the advantage of the symmetricity, the deflection from A to B is a mirror image of obviously C to B. So simply we can cut these two portion and if one portion is showing the same deflection as well as the slope, obviously the another triangle is showing the similar kind of thing because it has the mirror image of that and the condition for zero deflection at point, at point A, obviously you see the zero slope is there at point B, do not require to use the general moment equation for entire span of the beam because one part is valid to the another part equal segments are exactly symmetric. So only the moment equation for the segment AB is just required as I told you because of the symmetricity and this may you know like just uh, uh, make the uh, our analysis is simple and you need to write only for you know like as I shown you in the previous figure only we need to show the just one figure of half of the portion and then whatever the analysis is there which is pretty you know like uh, similar to the another thing, an another thing. So taking into the account of the differential equation of the elastic curve for segment AB now integrating twice just you know like for the entire beam. So what we have, we have EI into D2Y by DX square which is the moment equation for AB is equals to W0 you know like L by 4 because of you know like uh, the point uh, this uh, uh, reaction forces are there on the top of that. So this R into A you can say or W0 L by 4 into X minus W0 X square by L which you see you know like uh, the <coughs> combined load is there which is acted at X equals to you know like at one third distance so X by 3 or we can say by integrating that we have the uh, slope as well as the deflection. So slope is EI into dy by dx is nothing but equals to W0 L x square by 8 minus W0 x4 by 12 L or 12 into L plus C1 or we can say EI into EI is nothing but equals to the deflection equation is W0 L x cube by 24 minus W0 uh, x times 4 divided by 60 L plus C1 x and C2. So C1 x and C2 are nothing but you see you know like uh, these integrating const, uh, constants are there. So again by keeping those boundary conditions we can simply get the C1 and C2 value. So again the similar kind of things are there because uh, the, this is a simply supported beam. So both ends A and C are nothing but you see has the zero deflection. So at x, equal, x equals to 0, the starting point A, we have the deflection y equals to 0. So obviously C2 is equals to 0 and then you see because of the symmetricity dy by dx, that means the slope at mid of the span, that means at x equals to L by 2 is 0 always. So by keeping those conditions, what we have dy by dx, ei into dy by dx, just keep 0, we have W0 L divided by 8 and x square was there since x equals to L by 2, so L by 2 square minus W0 divided by 12 L, L by 4 to the power 4 
plus C1 into you see you know like uh, uh, whatever uh, these conditions are there. So, we have L by 2. So, uh, C1 is nothing but equals to minus uh, uh, 5 times W0 L cube by 192. So, by keeping the C1 value in the main equation, we have the entire you see the coefficients with those boundary conditions. So, you see here the deflection equations from A to B also from C to B because it is a symmetricity is there. We have E i into y is nothing but equals to W0 L x, uh, x cube divided by 24 minus W0 because it is the intensity of that uh, triangular load x 5 to the power 60 L minus 5 W0 L cube x divided by 192. So, this is the total equation of the entire beam of there and now you see we can simply reduce this equation by taking all those W0 L X cube and just taking out. So, we have E i into y is nothing but equals to minus W0 X by uh, 960 L if you are taking then we have w 25 L 4 minus 40 L square X square plus 16 times uh, 16 into X 4. So, you see here what we have we have an algebraic equation in terms of L and X. So, we can simply calculate you see the maximum deflection because we know that at exactly mid span at X equals to L by 2 we have the maximum deflection is there. So, we have E i into y the maximum is nothing but equals to minus W 0 L 4 divided by 120 for a triangular load and you see the simply supported beam is to be supported. So, you know like uh, and by keeping you see the value of E and i it is pretty simple to calculate the what is what will be the total value of the deflection is there for these terms. So, the, in this you see you know like the lecture we mainly discussed about the Macaulay method and Macaulay method is uh, very much suitable for you know like when the changing of the load is there and if you want to calculate the moment for a different different segments. So, you can pretty easily you see you know like describe those segment by a unit uh, function approximate function or we can say you see the Langridge's function and then only by keeping the things in your mind that if the negative values are there of the parenthesis you need to ignore that part. Only you need to consider the positive value and by integrating all those things we can simply calculate moment deflection as well as the slope of those conditions. And then you see if you keep those you know like uh, the boundary conditions you have all those coefficients the integrated coefficients and you can <coughs> evaluate also where the maximum uh, uh, this uh, uh, slope or this deflection is there and what is the value of this maximum deflection is. So, in this you see only we discuss about when we have a point load and we have the UDL. But if we have a combined load altogether that means you see if they are combinedly acted on a beam and if the beam is having itself you see a different cross section then you see how we can calculate the deflection and how we can calculate the slope you know like uh, we are going to discuss in the next lecture that uh, how we can evaluate it, those things. So, for this lecture I think these you know like the Macaulay method is sufficient and you just try all those numerical problems again then you can again clearly you know like uh, uh, see the feasibility of this parenthesis then how to write the parenthesis this you know like uh, the moment equation for that and once you write the moment equation your half of the question is solved and then all you need to put those boundary conditions to get the value of deflection as well as the slope. Thank you.